Yeah, hi guys. Um, just thought I'd do a, um, well, a slightly quick rundown on on how people are looking at Jesus and really should be looking at Jesus. <clears throat> okay, so after you've gone through your salvation steps and that, um, which is pretty much going through this part, you just give yourself to Jesus and uh, um, just say, yes, Jesus, fix me, please. And uh, let him let him um, start to work on you and um, start to follow him, and he will help you with with your issues. Once you accept him, um, he'll start get removing your your addictions and dirt and all that sort of stuff. Um, so what you're doing is you're basically entering into a marriage, right? So you've got your agreement. Um, that sort of stuff, and he, he tells you what what the agreements are, and <clears throat> uh, love you forever, and uh, all that sort of thing. So you're basically in a marriage, all right. That's the way you got to look at it. Hence the name Bride of Christ. All right. So uh, the brides, not just not just women, and all of that sort of stuff. There's none of the sex stuff in heaven anyway. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, yeah, that's. But that's the way you've got to look at um, when you when you're joining with Christ sort of thing. You've got the same sort of uh, contract sort of thing. You're entering into a marriage um, where He keeps His promises and all that sort of stuff, and uh, and you work on keeping yours, and and He'll forgive you as you go as you're trying. All right, so you just got to keep trying. That's pretty much it. So at the start, so what you've got. So next step is uh, you basically got that these two things are pretty much the same. So you, you buy roses for your for your lady because uh, you know um, she loves that sort of stuff. Women will let you know. And that's another thing about Jesus. He lets you know, and God he lets you know exactly how to please him. All right, and you don't go outside those boundaries. Don't go making up your own little parties like Christmas or whatever. To try and please him because it won't work. He's told you how, what he likes, and uh, he's given you uh, feasts and festivals that you should be following to please him. So uh, that's what you do. You don't upset your missus. You you do what makes her happy. All right. Well, same thing. So you give flowers to her. All right. And uh, this comes down to the people that say um, water baptism. Don't do water baptism. They, they, they like teaching this sort of thing. So it comes down to that. So you can say to your missus, turn to your woman there now and just say to her, listen, love, we, I've got the contract from the marriage. All right? I don't have to give you roses anymore, so I, I'm not going to give you any because it's not in the contract. And uh, that's the way they look at water baptism. All right? It's not in the contract, so they don't have to do it. All right? even, even though this is pleasing and they're in a marriage and this this is uh this is why you're gonna look at it sort of thing. So um so yeah and the other favourite thing they like to do is they um like to point at the cross. Oh the thief, the thief on the cross, you know. Don't you want to be just like that thief? You know, you can be like that thief too. Um uh, no <laughs> and and you're not nailed to a cross. That's the whole point. You've got a choice. You can actually go and get those roses and give them to Jesus. You're not bolted up here. All right. You, you've still got choice. He don't have nothing. You got no choice. All right. Um, God, God will save who He wants to save, sort of thing. But anyway, He said He'd take him to paradise. All right. So um, basically, you know, if if you're pointing at the the cross sort of thing is your goal in life, you know, it's sort of like talk to the hand. So uh, when you have a look at, uh, what have we got here? So yeah, you see for baptism, for I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you, sort of. So uh, you can see the various is there. So you've got here, <clears throat> this is the thing, the, the once saved, always saved don't realize well pretty much all across the board don't realize oh you don't have to do that for salvation right so no they're, they're right you don't have to do that so here's here's how it works there's not one salvation there's three all right so you got pre mid post tribulations 
uh, your raptures. All right, so the bride goes to the third heaven, all right, and the bride can now go to all the other um, areas as well. Uh, then you've got the lukewarm ch left behind church and tribulation saints go to paradise, all right, same as the fellow on the cross, he goes to paradise, all right. Um, and then you've got uh, the third time he comes is for Judah who inherit the earth so that's your wings of the eagle uh, one as well alright so uh, the bride is Luke uh, Luke talks to the bride and the bride pray to be counted worthy the bride read Luke if you're a Jew you can read Matthew that's why everyone thinks they're a Jew they keep reading Matthew Mark is for the Tribulation Church. This is the mob that think they're Matthew and haven't figured it out yet, or they're asleep. Um, so when they go through Tribulation, they'll need to be reading Mark and they'll let them know. Um, you'll see the difference in Scripture here. you got Luke, who wore a white robe. In Mark, it was a purple robe. In Matthew, it was a scarlet robe. Alright. So... <clears throat> So yeah, so there, this is what it comes down to, is the difference between the bride and the church is the bride loves her husband and wants to please the husband and wants to give up sin and wants to wants to keep improving and get better and and uh, be worth, be uh, be clean and and stop sinning. That's what the bride wants to do, right? Um, to be holy like Jesus, and he led that example was to be like that. So that this is this is a thing, you don't keep sinning, you just, you work at getting rid of your sin and you ask, ask Jesus to take it from you and, and desire to be with him and desire him to come and all that sort of stuff. If you've got none of that, if you have no thirst for, for uh, his return or his coming and that, you need to work on it, because uh, well, that's, that's pretty much it. So. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's all your salvation and all that sort of stuff in the one. Um, so I encourage you to get baptized, and I encourage you to go the extra steps. Um, they'll say it's works. Well, tell your wife that. All right. Your wife says, "Could you put? You know, I, I did the washing up last night. Hint, hint. Uh, it drops you a hint, and you go. You just look the other way, and you go. It's not in the contract. I don't have to do no washing up." Right, this is the way you're treating God, right? And Jesus is God, make no mistake on that. Uh, so, this is the way you've got to start looking at your relationship with Him because that's what He's asking for. He wants a relationship, He wants you to pray. Pray, not like everyone else prays, do your pray, right? Don't be like the hypocrites. Uh, if you, even if your pray is not a long pray, just pray as, as good as you can and make sure you're thankful um, because the more things that you're thankful for the more he listens he, he uh, trust me he loves loves being people that are being thankful for things and then um, pray for other people and then um, ask him to correct you in areas where you need to be corrected be pacific don't don't say world peace or well, i need my whole life fixed you tell him which areas what do you need to work on and what do you need help with um but yeah and um get rid get rid of all your corrupt music and just put um, uplifting music that gets you closer to him and that sort of thing. Everything in your life you do, you need to um, use it to get closer to him. If it's taking your mind away from him, it's not good. Just get rid of it. Alright, so, yeah, buy some roses. <laughs> Alright, God bless guys.